Part of developing an API is writing documentation for what we developed because we need to communicate with front end developers and the mobile developers. We use the Postman through our developing process. We could use Postman for that communication process. You could send the CURL through here. You can click the code and copy that code and send it to someone. This is the way of communication. And uh, you could also click here on your collection and export it as JSON file. Send that file to to another developer and he will import it. There is another convenient way and more professional is to add the documentation inside our code base. So it could be updated easily for everyone. And we could use something like Swagger. You can find it under uh, this dark online username and uh, L5 Swagger. It has like 20 million downloads so it has a lot of usage so we are going to use it without further ado let's uh, start by integrating the swagger to our uh, laravel api so i'll open the project and i'll copy that command all right and i'll paste it here we first have to install this package composer require right here we go and we have to configure it publish the service provider all right as we can see we have uh l5 swagger config file created all right this file and we have in the resources views vendor some views here right to be able to see it in the browser and we have the last one let's say use it for now let's see what will be the output uh, of course we have some errors so it needs some data uh, to be able to generate generate it i'll write the documentation and then i'll explain it I will go to the auth controller and I'm going to write documentation for login API. So it will be something like this. This is how to write Swagger documentation. It's consisting of uh, some annotations and uh, we should start every annotation with at OA. And uh, in case in our API, it's a post request, so we we have a function post, and we should write the uh, API URL here. If you have some, for example, a user or the ID or something like this, we could like write it here, but we don't have in the login. And we should have tags, so maybe um, we have uh, some APIs or multiple APIs under the same tag. So it is a way of uh, organizing the APIs in the Swagger UI. And uh, I think we have optional, uh, optional summary and description. Maybe the description is optional, but summary I think it is required. So it is something like a title for that API. All right, and we have the request. So in our case, the request body is required and uh, it is JSON content and we have email and password required and we have, we need to write the details of every attribute. So uh, we will use the uh, annotation property and we have our first property is email and it is a string and format email and this is an example for it and uh, yeah the password is the uh, something uh, is the same and uh, the response we could have multiple responses so the first response could be should be a successful re response right in case of we have the response successful we have we have a code for that response we have the response we have we expect a token and we expect a user object and also we could have a validation error the validation could be something like this 
now let's um, save that and try to generate the documentation again and we have another error so at OA info uh, like the info attribute or the info annotation should be there we don't have an info annotation here so I will add it and explain it again let's go to uh, the base controller and uh, I'll paste some code here so we will write the annotation info alright so I paste it here in the con in the base controller so it will work for uh, all APIs alright so we have uh, some like meta information like title uh, description and version of the API maybe you add your email contact here or right and uh, some license we will save it and uh, try again <coughs> we have another error so schema not found user schema not found as you can see i used in the response we have the response object we have a user resource so we need to put a schema inside user resource because we return user resource here in case of a successful response so we will go to user resource and add the schema there all right let's uh, add it in here right so we have a schema we call it we, uh, by the way we we could add it anywhere we want but i think uh, this is the best place for it right because this is what we uh, return back in the response so it is a uh, schema it is name and it is uh, type it is object uh, title all right some description and we have some attributes some properties each with property details right exactly what we return from here right i'll save this and try to generate again and here we go everything uh, is successful now and this generate command is generating this api docs.json so this is the uh this is the output of uh, our swagger annotation all right this is what is the package is doing all right let's now go to our browser and open localhost api documentation right and yeah we can see some uh, meta info we added and we can see our tag if we and we can see our schema so the user resource schema all right and if we clicked in the os tag we will find our api right we can use our api if we click expand it if we expand our api we can see our parameters email and password and we have an example of the response right and different responses so this is a very convenient way for communication with front-end developers and mobile developers so this is very easy and uh, inside our code so we can also run our api so let's uh, try it and uh, yeah as you can see i can update this but i'll execute and um, we have a response the uh, it's a validation error response right this is the actual response right so the provided credentials are not correct i believe it's a test at example and the same password so let's execute again right so this is the our response headers and the end point and yeah we have a successful response and we have an actual token let's now add another api we will use we will add a documentation for logout api we could have something like this in the logout api so we have a boost request and our url something like this and i'll put it in the same tag and you have a summary description and we could have a response we don't have any request so we will have just it could be uh 200 response and we were, we are returning just a string 
and um, yeah uh, we ha could have like 401 unauthorized let's uh, save and regenerate all right and uh, let's uh, refresh here expand our host tag and yeah we can see our logout api let's uh, try our logout api all right execute we have an authenticated because we need to provide that token so how we do that in here right so we could go to the config and l5 swagger and let's scroll down let's scroll down all right and in here we have some commented examples for the authentication we are using a sentem so i'll uncomment this all right and in here i think i should do something like this all right we we are using Gisentum for the security should be an empty array right so and also i think we need to go here in the logout i think we need to do something like security equals an empty object another object with uh, centum right centum equal to another empty object right and in the login api we we don't need that so i'll make it empty like the security should be empty object let's save and check we have an error i think yeah with i think i think we need a, a colon here let's check here in the logout api let's generate again and still we have an error so what should be the problem Oh yeah, I think uh, this might not recognize a single code, so it should be double code, right? Let's uh, regenerate regenerate again. Yeah, everything working fine. Let's uh, reload, and uh, yeah, as we can see, we can we have now authorize new button. So let's uh, let's first have a token. So let's uh, try the login API. Let's uh, add our user test and execute. Let's copy our token and go here and authorize and add bearer space token. Paste our token and authorize. Let's uh, close this. Let's uh, close login API. Let's expand logout and let's uh, try it again. Right, let's execute yeah as we can see we have a successful response so we are now able to use our token you can go to the documentation and for some examples you can check the swagger bhb you can check a swagger bhb package and see some examples here and um, yeah um and i i'll upload all this under my account i'm said slash laravel rest api right so i published uh, recently uh, the uh, the project under this repository right and here is the videos we, i i did so far if you are watching this and that means you are following me during this series so thank you and i hope you enjoyed what we did so far and i believe i am going to stop here for now because i think we have everything we need to build a robust api so we started with the we started with the setup with laravel and docker also and we had a, a migration and we used factories and the seeders we used the authentication 
we sent them and we did some unit tests. We did examples for uh, complex uh, Git API and and uh, we did caching. We did example of Boost API for creating order and we added unit tests as well. And uh, the last thing we did is integrating Swagger as well. So I believe this is all you need to do. For the e-commerce application, it could be a very long application. I encourage you to fork that repo and add your B send me your BR and I'll happily review it and merge it to this uh, repo. And also, if you have an idea for another lessons or something not clear, you want me to clear it, please let me know in the comments. You are so welcome. And uh, yeah, thank you for making it so far to this point and uh, enjoy your day. See you later. Bye.